All right, y'all. First and foremost, I want to give all praise to you. How about Shimmy? I was shot, broke a thumb. Mic check, mic check. My mic is acting a little funny, y'all. It's acting a little funny. Mic check. But first and foremost, give all praise to you. How about Shimmy? I was shot, broke a thumb. I know I got a lot of static in this thing, y'all. We're going to try to fight through this thing. Uh, while I still got the spirit to do this video. <laughs> Uh, we go do a little debate review. It's just only I only got about 10 minutes worth of video I want to show and uh, want to talk through these things. All right. All right. So first and foremost, again, give all praise to you. How about Shimmy? I was shy, bro. Um, let's get into this thing. Uh, is this what I want? Look at that. Captain to Captain uh, Kataza obliterates true nation. Ruth is the Israelite. That's a debate. Okay. So now here's my question, right? In the book of Ruth, when we read Ruth chapter two and verse 10, it says, then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me seeing as I am a stranger, right? Now this particular word stranger is no cry. And it says foreign, alien, foreigner, foreign woman, harlot, Un unknown unfamiliar then it goes in that's the biblical usage now the actual definition strange in a variety of degrees and applications foreign non-relative adulterous different or wonderful alien foreigner outlandish stranger woman now when we read in torah they use gar a lot but in ruth when it talks about stranger this is a completely different word and it's very specific so are you saying that this word could also mean, well, no, she's just from a different land? Uh, not only am I saying that that could mean that they're from a different land or a different tribe's inheritance, but that can directly be associated with an Israelite. That's horrible. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and... And y'all hold on to that point where, there, where um, you know, Katada said, man, he can prove that it's directly related to an Israelite, that it can be directly related to an Israelite. Uh, also, that particular word there. Um, let's go. Uh, Ruth chapter one, where it says, um, and they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and Ruth clave unto her. And she said, behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her God. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. So where it says she's returned to her gods, what is that referencing? It is it is referencing directly, for example, what I had read earlier. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read two scriptures just so that this way you'd be. Return to her God. Her sister-in-law return. Go and return to your gods and your people. All right. He's going to break this thing down in roof be able to get the context and hopefully that's within my two minute time earlier i read inside of exodus 22 and 28 where it says that thou shalt not revile the gods nor curse the rulers because ruth was written during the book of judges and also when you read for example in um give me one second just to make sure that i find i want to make sure i quote the proper scripture here bear with me um and then just let me know if i go over the time it's not that big a deal that when you read inside of for example exodus 21 and 6 that word judges is also elohim so what you see is that judges has been elohim and in proper context that's talking about the rulers of thy people so she was going back to her land where there would be different judges at the gate Where you done those your two scriptures? Yeah, yeah. I, I paraphrased one. I don't know if you want me to read it directly. That's that's up no, to I you. No, I was just making sure. Con. Okay. Yeah. So now my question is: In the time of Judges, um, when we read the Book of Judges, um, how many judges were judging Israel at a time? Okay. Well, you had different judges that were all throughout those times that were raised up for specific purposes. But I'm, I'm sorry. You want to say something? Oh, no, no, I was saying calm, my bad. Uh, oh, no, no, no sweat. You know what I'm saying? But what you see is that, for example, Deuteronomy, hold on, let me get there with you. Um, and let me just explain what's going on here. Now, well, I know y'all hear it, you know, 
Oh, man, we don't need you to explain nothing, man. We here. You just let the thing play. Anyway, y'all. Um, what Katazar's trying to do, instead of, because uh, I know he knows that these judges in the book of judges, called the book of judges, because these people have been raised up by the Lord. But he tried to correlate and precept it with a, a precept in Deuteronomy to show that um, each tribe had to elect a certain amount of judges, you know, to handle certain matters because, you know, Moses, it was getting too stressful. And so he's using that concept of judges and applying it to what was happening in the book of Judges. Um, so he don't want to say that uh, there was only, you know, Deborah was the main judge at that time. Uh, Othniel, Oth Othniel, Othniel, he was the main judge, Samson was a judge at that time and Samson wasn't really like a he wasn't like you know handling matters he was the leader he was the leader of that little time but he I don't even know if he was the leader yeah he was the leader because he was just going out and, and handling these battles but he wasn't a leader like that not like not like the boar and not like um uh, Othniel and Gideon um, his was kind of, kind of personal, uh, his segment. But anyway, you know, it's, it's a different, it's a difference. It's not, it's not in the time. He finna try, the brother finna try to explain it, but I just want to see, I want y'all to see the methodology, you know. Um, I'm going to read this one verbatim. So this is Deuteronomy, uh, 16, and I'm going to go down to verse 18. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Judges and officers shall thy make in all thy gates, which the Most High thy power giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. So now th there isn't um a consensus. Ten minutes left. Okay, there isn't a consensus of how many judges that there are, but we do know that there are judges in all the gates of all the tribes of Israel as laid down by Moses in Deuteronomy. Khan, okay. The problem with that is uh, Deuteronomy is not the time of judges, and it said that they may do just judgment, and clearly there was an issue with righteousness going on, which is why we kept going into captivity. Now, when we read, when we read really quickly, and then we'll get back to it, uh, I want to read Judges chapter 4, because there's a few of them that we can get. And I'm under the, you know, I ain't really like that answer for me. Uh, it kind of left a little holes in there. You just, you know, but when we do things, we go back and we're, we're, we're looking at stuff. It's easy to say, hey, man, I would have did this, man. You should have said that. But, um, and let me say this too, man. Um, excellent dialogue between True Nation and ISUPK, man. We just got to sit down and have these dialogues. It don't have to be a competitive thing, even though uh, this kind of turned into that. Hey, man, you got your butt whooped and all that. It ain't got to be all that. We can just have a... Uh, have the dialogue or have the debate and uh let the people let the people take what they take what they let them glean from that conversation what they what they may um uh, what they may glean um going to double back to one judges chapter four and um verse five and it says and deborah salaki verse five and she dwelt under a palm tree so about deborah of deborah between ramah and bethel Bethel, uh, Bethel in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Right now, I'm gonna go over to Judges 15 and 16 really quickly. Judges chapter 15, and I want uh, we'll drop down to verse 20. We know that this is talking about Samson, and he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. So we see that the judges were only one at a time judging all of Israel. I agree that in the time of, you know, when we we're being righteous with Moses, he set that up, but we're in the time of judges. We're not talking about this particular time with Moses. We passed Moses, we passed Joshua. We're now in the time of judges. So that's irrelevant. Now, um, another question. Why, here's a good question. Why did Ruth give up her baby when it was said? And, and why did her sisters say that a son was born to Naomi? That's actually a very good question. So the reason being is because one, that's Naomi's uh, uh, grandson. 
You understand, like that baby is Naomi's grandmother. I don't I don't know if you have kids, Darash. Um, but when my child was born, my son's mother was in the room, and after the baby was born, it went in my arms, it went in her arms, it, it went in the nurse's arms. Um, because I don't know if, if if you're familiar with childbirth. Oh, that was a rhetorical question, Salakia. But um, but the point being is when it also says that a child was born onto her, this has to do with the law of kinsmen and inheritance that I read earlier. So I'm going to read it again. So I'm going to go back to Leviticus, the 25th chapter, and then explain. You see, that was that, that, that first part was fluff. Now he get into the real reason uh, of the inheritance. But the first part about, hey, man, you know, the grandma was there at the, at the, at the childbirth and and uh, you know the baby was handed to me and then it was handed that was all just that was all that was all fluff but the real reason he shouldn't get into it uh the inheritance he's trying to try to break that down um and also darash he did kind of clean it up a little bit and, and made sure that you know that he um stated that there was only one judge um pretty much in the times of judges uh, it was it was one judge that was leading Israel. These judges were leaders of Israel. So this is Leviticus 25 and 25. If thy brother be waxen poor and hath sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. So what happens is Boaz is the nearest of kin who's stepping up into the role that's why when you read in ruth the fourth chapter they had a they had a uh, a council you know what i'm saying where boaz went and sat down in front of the elders at the gate and and they went and had a talk about who was the nearest kinsman who would redeem the inheritance so the child that was being laid down was going to make sure that that land never left naomi's remnant of her family because the only one left in Naomi's family was Ruth. So Ruth went, married him, and now that child that is her, that is her grandson is going to inherit the land that once belonged to Naomi's husband, Elimelech, so that this way that name could live on and it never leaves their family because the Lord would not cause us to oppress each other and lose our inheritance. That's That's horrible. So one, yes, I do. I actually have two children. Now, my question was, why was it that a child was born unto Naomi? That was the question. Why was it born to Naomi? You know, he went in and tried to give the inheritance name, but it just goes into Boaz. It's not explaining. Um, he's not really explaining why that Naomi, that child went to Naomi instead of Ruth. Um he started getting into what Boaz and, and all of that is talking about. He asked you about Ruth. Why is Ruth giving up this child to Naomi? A child is given to Naomi. Uh, let's go. We're going to skip it. We're going to watch this other video. That was one, y'all. Hey, this ain't going to be a long video. What was the verse? verse. In Shalakia, uh, it was a long debate. This is like an uh, hour and a half, close to two-hour debate. So go to Cross the Line Radio watch the debate you know i only took the 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 q a but i did watch the whole debate uh katazai's main uh isubk captain katazai his main uh focus was on the geology or the geography yeah uh, yeah in the geographic uh geographic placement of israel and where they were located at to prove that roof could or roof was an israelite um and the brother from true nation he was leaving uh he was using uh things from the text uh he was using um verses and precepts from uh the book of uh judges uh you know dealing with ruth to establish his point and that's why i kind of sway more with him because it was you know you're gleaning from the from the actual uh text and not you know bringing in uh pre-notions from other texts like deuteronomy and numbers uh to show or to try to prove that these people here because um you know people get shifted around and it's is you know you don't know exactly who there and, and and who's sitting in these uh these locations 
and the um in the years between this thing you know you're estimating that uh and to just say that it's just all israelites in one particular area uh is problematic to me you know what i'm saying there was always strangers there was always um heathens that were around us and that were uh sojourned among us uh, but let's look at this second video here um let me see how is king david an israelite yes or no yes i am in psalms the 69th chapter and the eighth verse i'm going to read it i am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children did king david say this yes or no uh let me get to right now take your time no problem 69 and what this is 69 and 8 is this king david's words in psalms yeah it is king david's words did king david call himself a stranger yeah did he call himself an alien yeah that word alien is it the same word that was used to describe ruth i'm not sure i have to go to uh the hebrew to check let's go and check together no problem Psalm 69 and verse, what was the verse? Verse was eight. Verse eight. So now we see stranger is, is a uh, Zawar, but what is the word for alien? It says Necrot. Is that the same word that was used to describe Ruth? Gone. So can this word be dis used to describe an Israelite? Yep. Earlier, you said it was terrible when I said that this word can be used to describe. And I don't think he said terrible. He said horrible there. We will I literally listen to it again. That's why I told y'all to hold on to that point. Uh, that precept that the brother used, Darash from True Nation, he used um, Nakia, something like that. But man, let's look, let's look. Let me share my screen real quick. And I'm going to show you how we be playing, man. Oh, my goodness. So, you know, Katazai kind of caught him on this. He caught him on this because, um, it's you know, when something people bring out certain precepts, you ain't seen it. You know, if if, if you got to just glance at it, you got to give it to him. But if you if you, if you just read the text, um, and he could have picked up, but it just could have, would have, should have, man. And all that, you know, but all that ain't necessary. He didn't pick up on it, so. Um... But let me show you what Katas I did here. Hold on, let me share the screen uh, tab here. The multiverse look up. All right, y'all. Psalm sixty nine. We go up. It was verse eight here. Um, let's go start at verse four. It says, "They hate me without cause. They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs on mine head." They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I, res then I restored that which I took not away. O oh God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on me, let not them that wait on thee, O oh Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel, because for thy sake I have been, I have borne reproach. Shame have covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. All right. Now, is he saying he's literally a stranger? Like, is, he, is this literal? literary i'm in a literal um i i am become a stranger unto my brethren and unto my and, and an alien unto my mother's children all right and he's talking about this hate and this reproach hold on y'all i'm plugging my mic. he's talking about this hate and this reproach that um that his family is having for him that his enemies are having for him because of his reproach 
all right for the for the most high sake all right so when he's reading this i am a become am i i am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children um this ain't saying that he's moved away and that he's from another land um and that's what i would have asked him maybe i don't know you know what i'm saying but i would have explained i would have i would have wanted to hear the explanation of how does one become a stranger and does this fit this particular text you know a lot of brothers say well you he became a stranger because he fell into sin um and if that's the case then you know most of israel we should see that throughout the whole text most of us would uh be strangers because we all falling into sin and not living lived according to uh thus says the lord so he kind of got him in he kind of finessed him with this one um am i become a stranger i am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children and that's pretty much saying man my folks is not claiming me all right they don't want nothing to do with me but that don't mean that um that you're the type of stranger that he's the type of stranger that is quoted um dealing with ruth all right it don't mean he's that's that type of stranger that he's literally a stranger okay but that's what he used and if you you know you you feel like nah you know what you know what brother feeney you reach in there um okay you know what i'm saying <laughs> okay but for me it seems like they just found the precept i mean um he i ain't gonna say he found it because he was waiting on him to say that he was waiting on him to say that stranger and he was gonna go here this was already planned he had him lined up already that's why he's so confident when he comes here all right so confident i am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children how you a stranger how you a king and you the stranger and you're a stranger come on now if you're that kind of stranger but this is not this is figuratively speaking all right he's speaking in a metaphor all right he's just saying man these folks don't want nothing to deal they don't want nothing to do with me as if i was a stranger or an alien you know what i'm saying but you can't be no darn alien to your mother to your mom i mean uh to your brothers and sisters um to your literal brothers and sisters it's your literal brothers and sisters so uh this is just saying man hey you know i don't want that i don't i don't want the v folks don't want nothing to do and let me see let's look at comparative text see what we got um hold on y'all psalms on 69 8 let's see if we can find it in bible hub here uh bible hood bible hood here we go uh even my own brothers pretend they don't know me they treat me like a stranger i am a foreigner to my own family a stranger to my own mother's children uh i've become a stranger to my brother's aliens to my mother's son same thing here same thing there same thing i become estranged from my brother's and a stranger to my mother's son. Uh, we got a strange, a strange, a strange, a strange. Um, a strange. I am like a stranger to my relatives, like a foreigner to my family. I've become a stranger to my own brothers, a foreigner to my mother's sons. I've become a stranger to my kindred, an alien. Uh, I've become a stranger to my. And I, that, you know, Katiza. Katiza deals with music, and he knows metaphors, and, 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 and he knows when someone's speaking figuratively, man. I know he know that. Oh, y'all couldn't even see that. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Share this tab instead. I'm sorry. I ain't let y'all see. But uh, foreigner to my own family, stranger to my own mother's children, uh, even my own brothers pretend they don't know me. They treat me like a stranger. I've become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's children, and uh, estranged from my brothers, and an alien to my mother's sons. But again, here he's talking about the um, the reproach. All right, let's go back here. But like I say, he 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 got it in. Fair's all all is uh 
Well, I forget how that, that, that quote go, man. All this fair and game or something like that. But, uh, hey, man, he got an it Israelite. Through. He got it through there. Let me pull it back a little bit, show you how he finessed it. It's used to describe an Israelite. Zawar. But what is the word for alien? It says Necrot. Is that the same word that was used to describe Ruth? Gone. So can this word be dis used to describe an Israelite? Yep. Earlier you said it was terrible when I said that this word can be used to describe an Israelite. You never said that this word can be used to describe an Israelite because I never asked you that question. You actually did. You said, no. is this about, everyone can go and check the replay and what you will find is that he said it was terrible when I said that this word used for Ruth was used to describe an Israelite. I know Corey is chuckling right now because he has a memory like an iron trap. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot wait for y'all to see the replays and to see that he is sadly mistaken on that point. Um, mm -hmm. Now let's move on to, is interracial marriage a sin? We hold that interracial marriage is a sin over extra nation. So oh. it depends on what you ask. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not asking, you know, anyone else. I'm asking Darash of True Nation. So yes or no, is interracial marriage a sin? We hold that interracial marriage is a sin. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I said yes or no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is sleeping with a Moabite a sin? Yes. Where was the brother Boaz punished for sleeping with a heathen? Let's go to the book of Judges. The book of Judges, chapter 21, and verse 25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So when we read in the book of Judges, for example, when you go to the story of Samson, Samson did a number of things Nazarites were not supposed to do. It's just chronicling it. It doesn't say whether or not he got punished for it. It also doesn't say whether or not uh, Boaz got punished for what he did. So asking me that question, of course, it's it's a history. It's, rec it's recollecting history. So asking me that question doesn't make sense. I'm I'm a, I say this too. I I don't know the judgment for that. I don't know if we have. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in the text. The exact judgment for marrying a, 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 a heathen. I know it's permitted, it's prohibited. I mean, it's per, uh, prohibited, but um, I don't know the judgment. I don't think I ever seen the judgment. I don't know if it's, it may be in there. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. And so for Katazar to be saying this, I would ask him, you know, hey man, what's the judgment uh, for that? But we do know it's, it's a sin but um do we is there immediate judgment for that or is this something that you know just collected and written down where when we go up there to be presented as chase version we had this thing on us oh okay so you're saying that he did not get punished no i'm saying that all the book of ruth was doing just like the rest of judges was chronicling the information and it does not say whether he did or whether he did not that's what, what I'm was was Samson punished for dealing with a heathen? No, Samson was punished. That well, Samson was what's the word beguiled when he was dealing with the heathen. So, so dealing with a heathen did not get him into any sort of trouble or discipline with God. Dealing with the heathen is when he gave away his uh his the secret to his strength, and he was tricked, and his hair was cut, and he was placed in cat uh, excuse me he was placed as a slave to the philistines all right well let's but let, you can't but you, oh, no, I thought you were I'm, done. Done. I'm sorry but hold on i'm not done i'm, no, not I'm done. sorry go ahead please but, brother. but you but you can't but you can't sit here and say because you read all through the but you read a uh, judge's chapter i think it's 14 or 15 and you see there was a number of things he did from touching a dead body to eating honey out of a dead lion all of that is not what it did not say that's what he was uh what he was punished for as a matter of fact the issue, or when you read the history of uh, Judges, when his parents were like, well, why don't you go and get an Israelite woman? 
they said the the scriptures say that they did not know it was of God. So. And that's about all we got, y'all. You know, like I say, man, y'all go check that debate out, man. Salute to both of those brothers, man. Uh, they both had some great points. Uh, I do lean more with Daraj, but, uh, you know, Katja's I made some good points. And like I say, he he was battle ready. That that's, that Psalm 69, was, I said, ooh, he got him. He got him. But, nah, man, I, I you know, you, you know, David was uh, speaking figuratively. I think, and I think too, man, that he's honest enough. Uh, Kaltazar's honest. Captain Kaltazar is honest enough. If you you had to ask him that, uh, is that figuratively or literal? And if you would have asked, and then I would have asked him, is Naomi's uh, use of that word figuratively or literal? And she's literally talking about, um. Her being a literal stranger, uh, is she speaking literally when she's saying that, or you know, especially when you go into songs, it's a song. Uh, but anyway, y'all, uh, man, I hope this thing edifies uh, anybody. Y'all go check out that full debate there. I just wanted to do a little quick review um, on a couple of these topics that I seen uh, brothers going back and forth on. But them are some of the main, some of the main topics there. But it's definitely some more meat. Um, if you go to Cross the Line Radio and watch that video there. Uh, Shalom, Israel.